Hello once again, this is Pastor John Carlo from Christian Pentecostal Church, and we're studying a very unique subject, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And realize something as we study. Before the Spirit of God fell in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost, the Jewish people were the basic group of people that God was reaching. And of course, we know what happened. They got into religion and away from God in many cases. But it's interesting to note something about the Spirit of God coming down in, in, in the book of Acts 2.4. It became a new page, a new chapter in God's relationship with the people of this world. Because the Spirit of God falling opened the door for every single person, not just the Jews to come into a personal, intimate relationship with Christ through the Holy Spirit. Let's take a look at some of the things we're talking about. Going back even into Genesis in the 12th chapter, when God calls Abram, who becomes Abraham, we read this. Now the Lord said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred or your family and your father's house unto a land I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Now listen to verse 3. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Mm. Many who study the Bible see this verse as a prophetic statement that God was going to not only to take care of the people who were Jewish, but also the rest of the world, through the Jewish people. Remember, even Jesus came as a Jew. When we take a look at the New Testament and what happens after the resurrection and Jesus' ascension, and we see men like Paul being called by God to bring the gospel around the world. And you'll notice as we look at Paul's ministry, we see he opens the door as a Jew to all people coming to God. This was revolutionizing, even among the Jewish Christians, because God was opening the same traditions and the same opportunities for them as he did to the Jewish people, who had in many cases, unfortunately, rejected it or rejected Christ. Now take a look. Even Paul, in his writings, he's, he's concerned about the churches in Asia. Mm. And he see how the Holy Spirit is working to maintain the unity of the body of Christ. We're going to see one of the jobs of the Holy Spirit is to continue in unity the people of God. Mm -hmm. In Corinth, in Greece, the problem was even difficult because there was all kinds of different factions arising in, the, in, in a largely Gentile church. Mm. Then in Ephesus, also a Gentile church, we also see there's a large body of Jewish believers among the Gentile believers. And this caused a number of problems between them because the Jewish people were trying to hold on a lot of, to a lot of the Old Testament or the Old Covenant laws, where the Gentile believers were really not under that particular uh, order. And here was Paul trying to bring the two groups together which had not been together before. But the Spirit of God was the one who was going to break the wall down about the law mm -hmm. that separated the Gentile and the Jew. Mm -hmm. Now through the Spirit of God, we can read in Hebrews 20 and 10, that both the Jews and the Gentiles had access to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Not only to the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but also the gifts of the Spirit and so on, which we're going to look at. Again, as we saw in Genesis 3, the Old Testament makes it clear that the Gentiles were going to be blessed as well with Christ. It wasn't clear to some people that God would bring the Jews and the Gentiles together in one, as one. And again, Paul tries to teach this to the early church. The early church was interesting in the sense that they had all types of people in the church, not only Jews and Gentiles, there were slaves, there were women, there were all kinds of different changes that were happening under this new 
covenant from God. And continually, Paul goes through problems as people come to Christ of getting along with each other. People, for example, who the Jews were told not to have anything to do with them. We know from even the Old Testament where the Samaritans, who were Jewish of heritage, came out of, out of Egypt, out of Babylon and these other places, mm. and they took with them all kinds of Gentile-type theories and, and, and duties and obligations. And the Jews rejected them completely. They would have nothing to do with them. And of course, we know that Jesus Christ is showing us through his ministry how he went purposely into Samaria to bring the gospel and introduce himself to the people that were there. Now, the Spirit of God is not just speaking in tongues. Some people think that's true. Yes, that's one of the gifts, but the Spirit of God is to bring peace among the brothers and sisters in church. Because even in our church, we have people that come from all different backgrounds, different colors, different countries, different languages. This is what the New Covenant was all about, to bring people into the, into the covenant of Christ from all aspects of creation. And again, this is the this is the the I, I do, identity and the the work that the Holy Spirit is doing even today. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Now, if you think that's easy, bringing people from different cultures, different countries, different languages, and so on together, it's very difficult. And from what we read in the Word of God, it's only through the Spirit of God that people can be together. People need to hear that together as we go, even on our own country, breaking into different groups and colors and all kinds of things like that. Jesus even tells us about there was going to be one baptism, right? And we don't think he was talking about water baptism, but the baptism into Christ by the Holy Spirit that makes us all one. And this is powerful. The Spirit of God is not just there to help us speak in tongues or prophesy, but to be together in love. Even if we look in the book of, of Revelation, the seventh chapter, we see John sees it in this vision in heaven, all these different groups that are standing before the, the throne of God, different colors, different customs, men and women, all standing, people who have passed on, are standing before the throne of God together. Hallelujah. Now, part of the Holy Spirit's job was to, to bring teachers and apostles and evangelists and pastors and so on to train them in the Holy Spirit so that they would be teaching not under their own power or wisdom, but under the power and wisdom of the Holy Spirit. And he gives gifts to the church, which we're going to talk about, specific gifts through the Holy Spirit that was not that were not in the Jewish synagogues, but in the new churches that were coming to, the, to fruition in Jesus Christ. So we see that Christ's coming here wasn't only the fact to bring salvation, it was the fact to bring people together. Together. Now, take a look at the ministry of the Spirit. Paul comes into a big problem. We know the Jewish people had a lot of religious laws, which some were very good about how to live and lifestyle and so on. And now here's Paul, a Jew, being sent into these cities where Gentiles basically lived. And here he's trying to urge the believers to turn away of the, the ways of the Gentiles, uncleanness and all the things that gent the Gentiles were doing and come into a new life in Christ, which is a renewed life by the Holy Spirit. We're born again by the Spirit of God. What does it mean to us? Well, it means the Spirit of God, whoever who comes into Christ, has to stop doing the sins that they were doing. And the Gentiles were notorious for sins. So were the Jews. But the Gentiles even, I think, more so lying and stealing and, and hurting each other, 
bitterness and wrath and anger, all these kind of things were notorious in the Gentile cities and among Gentile people. But here we see the Holy Spirit is working. As they come to Christ, God is changing their attitude, their behavior, mm -hmm. and the way they see each other, bringing the love of God into the lives of both. Amen. Jesus even describes it as children of light. We are children of light. And all of, we become children of light as the Holy Spirit works in our life, whether we are a Jew or a Gentile. The same process has to take place. And he goes on to talk to us in the book of Acts, and he's saying that we have to be filled with the Spirit. Now notice this. When we worship and we speak and we, we sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, it's not about just playing music. It's about the Spirit of God moving in the hearts of people and coming out in various ways so that the people who don't know Christ will be attracted to the gospel. Now, notice this. We talked about being filled with the Spirit. We'll see as we continue to study this that the filling of the Spirit is not a one-time thing. The filling of the Spirit is constantly. We are being filled every moment of the day as we allow the Spirit of God to work in us. We are also going to see that the Spirit of God, through the Holy Spirit, is bringing people into the, into the kingdom of God through us that God loves. We may not love them, but God loves them, just like he loves us. Amen? Amen. Then we'll see that the key to the whole thing is the fruit of the Spirit. It's changes that we have to make. And we'll be talking about how the fruit of the Spirit that comes from the Holy Spirit will give us the power and the love and the concern that we need for those who are without Christ. So the Holy Spirit is not just a one-time thing or one-time even... Uh, experience the love of, of the Holy Spirit and through the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit is so open mm. and obvious through the books of the New Testament without it the great things that they did and went and, and brought to people would not have happened mm -hmm. as they allowed the Spirit of God to lead them and help them to bring a love to people that they didn't love as a group the Jewish people were taught not to have anything to do with the Gentiles. And now here in, the, in the, the new command of Christ, the gospel is brought to every single person, every different group, no matter who they are and no matter where they're from. We're going to stop here, and next week we're going to be talking about how the Spirit of God causes us to have spiritual fruit which helps us in our walk with the Lord and even in our testimony to others. God bless you, and we'll see you next week.